it's Andrea from andreatooley.com. Thank you so much for watching this video. I am so excited for this video today. It's something that you guys have been asking for a ton because as you know, I'm trying to interview medical specialists from all different fields of medicine to bring you information about um, all the different fields of medicine and what it's like in different careers. And one of the top requested fields that you guys are asking for is dermatology. And so today I have the most incredible special guest for you today who is a dermatologist and I can't wait for uh, us to have a conversation where I can ask her all about her career and hopefully shed some light on dermatology for all of you guys interested in the field. So I hope you like it. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you never miss a video. New videos on Mondays. And if you have any more questions or you want to connect more, you can always um, email me, find me on my blog, andreatooley.com, Instagram, or Twitter. All right, let's get started with our interview. All right. Hi, everyone. So I am here with Dr. Sandra Lee. I'm so excited to have you here today. And um, basically, I could do this huge introduction. You're such a fantastic dermatologist, but if it's okay, I'd just like oh, you, you to kind of- don't know that personally. I, I doesn't do, well, necessarily mean I've be Googled, the case, but I've yes, Googled I'm a dermatologist. A <laughs> <laughs> so could you just do a little introduction about yourself for us and kind of tell us sure. about who you are and things like that? Absolutely. I'm Dr. Sandra Lee. I, um, I'm a board certified dermatologist in private practice in Upland, California, which is just outside of Los Angeles, so Southern California. Um, I, uh, I went to medical school probably about, let's see how long, a little over a decade ago. And um, I am from this area, but I went to school out in the East Coast. And so uh, I went to medical school. I went to, I did, completed a dermatology residency. I did an additional year of fellowship. And, and this is where I am now. Great. Well, thank you so much for being with us. And um, for everybody who doesn't know, Dr. Lee has an amazing presence kind of in the media. You've been on The Doctors and all kinds of other public media. She writes about dermatology, speaks about skin health. Um, and now she's kind of taking the internet by storm with your YouTube channel and your Instagram. And I'll link all of that below in case anyone's not following you. I don't know why they wouldn't be. <laughs> oh, right. Well, some people don't like the things that I might post. I mean, in a nutshell, what you're speaking about is this sort of, I mean, I've been doing some segments for TV for probably about five years or so. It all started with the doctors. You know, I, I live near Los Angeles, so the doctors tapes at Paramount Studios in Hollywood. And um, I do a little, I do some things for some other little shows like, you know, the local Fox 11 News and, and that sort of thing. But just recently, I have um, I, I got a little bit into Instagram, and I and I realized that when I was posting videos of pimple popping or blackhead extractions or things like that, which actually, as a dermatologist, we don't really do on a regular basis, um, they were kind of popular, and from there, it just kind of blossomed. And I'll tell you. What's so interesting, and I know this is not really in the, you know, we, I know we're going to talk about so much basic stuff yeah, yeah. Uh, in the beginning, but just in general, what has been so interesting about this is it's kind of um, grown and our my YouTube channel and my Instagram have actually um, grown quite significantly in the yeah, last, yeah. within this last year, maybe like six months or so. And uh, it, it has been like stratospheric, the uh, uh, the tension that it gets compared to just, in fact, doing shows, international television segments. So right, right. It's, it is amazing. It has shown me the power of social media. And I think this is kind of a new area that we as physicians, we have to kind of tread a fine line here too, yeah. but there's a, this is a whole new um, time for us to in the ability to do this and so you know I think you yourself too are also a pioneer in this you know in social media and, and posting a lot of your videos and how-to videos for on YouTube so you know we're both kind of new at this yeah and I like that we're both young you're younger than I am and, <laughs> and we're both little. women and we're physicians and we're doing this on YouTube so it's nice Yes, 100%. I'm so with you there. It's wonderful. My husband actually was the one who discovered all of your stuff and told oh, me, really? yeah, okay. he's obsessed. He's oh, like your he's biggest a, fan. He's a, he's a PA, a physician okay. assistant. Yes. But he just like immediately was so 
um, captured and engrossed in all of your stuff. And, and then I started reading about you and I think everything that you're doing and showing all the different aspects of dermatology is so great. So I guess to kind of back up, one of the main reasons I have you here is because I'm, I get so many requests and comments and emails from people every day asking, can you, can you interview this type specialist and can you talk about this field? And dermatology is by far one of the most common fields that people want to know about and they want to hear from a dermatologist about what kind of what the path is to derm, what life is like. And so maybe if you could just kind of t- like back up to when you were pre-med or in medical school and kind of how did you choose dermatology? Why did you choose derm and what was the path like? So let me ask you when people are asking these questions, Mm -hmm. these are people that are wanting, are interested in going into medical school and interested in being physicians, right? I think that's interesting. Is pre-med. Yeah. Okay. Cause that's interesting to me because, you know, as I said, I'm probably at least 10 year, 10 years ahead of you. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think in my time, I mean, dermatology was also very competitive at that Mm -hmm. time, too. But Mm -hmm. I don't think a lot of people were necessarily seeking it out. I mean, I know it's Mm -hmm. not a required um, rotation for us as medical students. So it's a little bit harder to know whether you're interested in it. And I think that just like ophthalmology is similar, Mm -hmm. um, oftentimes there are people who really find it maybe somewhat late in their whole um, medical student career and they realize, oh my gosh, I would have liked this, but I didn't really realize that it was something that I would have liked, you know, because they don't really, they're not forced to, to do a rotation. Or exactly. Not, it's not a required rotation that is, right? right. Yep. Yep. I feel the same way because I didn't, I don't know a lot about Derm and I think I would have really liked it, but I didn't know anything about it. Yeah. So let's see. I, um... I went to I went to undergrad at UCLA, so I'm from Southern California, and I um, applied all around the nation. You know, in, in in California, it's a little bit harder and very competitive to get into medical schools, at least yes. during my because there's so few in such a large area. Yep. Yep. Um, and you know, I, I kind of make the comparison that in, I went to school in Philadelphia, and Philadelphia was like five schools within the whole small little you know city. Yeah. as opposed to five in the whole, you know, Southern California area. Right. So I think about 30% of my class was uh, from California. Wow. So significant part. I went to Hahnemann University School of Medicine, which is now Drexel. Drexel, yeah. And um, I, so I went to medical school there, and I my father's a dermatologist. Okay. So that's kind of the key as to what, you know, or I, re- I was already – very exposed to dermatology. I knew what it was about. I knew that it was a great specialty. Sure. My father did not in any way push me in one direction or another. Um, certainly he may have said, oh yes, it is a great specialty, but he wouldn't say, oh, you must do this. You right. must, you know. And um, I think I, the part of the reason why I'm, I um, pursued it was because I'm very similar to my father. I see, you know, he enjoys, he enjoyed his work and um, I was exposed to it. And we had textbooks all around the house. Certainly I would file in his office, you know, during one in my summers when I was a teenager. And, um, and then when you go to medical school, you hear things about it, that it Mm -hmm. is a great, very competitive specialty like yours is to, to, um, to, um, apply for and to get a position in. Mm-hmm. So um, I kind of already knew early on and just the, the thing is it's not easy to get. So right. I feel right. extremely fortunate that, that I um, have a position and uh, that I got a position as a dermatology resident. And um, my husband is also a dermatologist. So we yep. work together. We yep. took over my father's practice. And there's a lot of husband wife dermatologists. I think a lot of them meet maybe in residency. Um, but uh, we met in medical school. So we went to the same medical school. And uh, he, I think, when he first went to medical school, he had ideas of becoming like an orthopedic surgeon. Okay. Um, but when he saw dermatology, he realized, oh, this is a kind of specialty for me. So I think he, <laughs> he, um, we joke that, you know, he kind of rode my coattails there, but not really. He's, he's extremely intelligent on his behalf. He definitely got a position on his own. Um, but we were lucky to both get, you know, wow. positions in dermatology, though we were in different states. You know, we got married and 
I, I, I did my um, residency in Illinois uh-huh. at Southern Illinois University. Wonderful program. And my husband did his in New York. He's from New York, okay. New York City. At, wow, um, that's hard. Yeah. yeah, so we were in, in the first uh, three years of our um, of our married life, I think we were in different time zones. Wow. So, but that's just, that's kind of what you have to do. You know, yeah. I, we're alone. And the thing is that when it's finite, when you know that it's going to end, that's, it makes it a lot easier. Yeah. Okay. So wow. I did my residency in at Southern Illinois University okay. and um, wonderful people, wonderful program. After that, I did, um, I got great Mohs surgery training there. We had a wonderful Mohs surgeon. And so really you're my second and third year in uh, as a dermatology resident, uh, I got a lot of training there. To backtrack, it's very similar to your kind of, uh, to ophthalmology where we have one first year of transitional, right, right. transitional year like you did. And then you are now as your first year, you're in your first year of, dermat- of ophthalmology residency. Yep. And I think it's three years for you too, yep, right? It's the same, so yeah. I, so I did the same thing. I did a transitional medicine year. Um, and then I did three. I um, did three years of dermatology, and then I decided to do a fellowship as well, okay. which was in San Diego. Um, it was like a cosmetic laser and surgical fellowship. Okay. So that's where I, I actually did it with a very well-known, very internationally renowned um, dermatologist, mm-hmm. uh, Richard Fitzpatrick. So mm-hmm. really got exposed to all the kinds of lasers that there were really that are available and. Got to do a lot of cosmetic surgery. I think in California we're a little more sure. we're a little more cosmetically inclined, and there's a big overlap between us and cosmetic or plastic surgeons. So right. I learned to do. I mean, one of the things I do is liposuction. Uh-huh. I do. I did train. I did hair transplants. You know, wow. lower face facelifts, upper and lower blepharoplasties. Yeah. I still do. I still do upper bluffs, bluffs. and. Wow. Um, so, you know, a lot of different things, laser resurfacing, that kind of thing. So a lot of more cosmetics we learned there. Uh-huh. So, and then after that, I um, that was in like 2004, I think we completed that. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was, I had a, my, I was pregnant during that, during my fellowships. So I, and I had a, my first uh, kid, a boy, and I have two boys now who are nine and 10. Wow. That's so, so that's great. It. That's so, so great. I mean, you had an amazing path and you're doing incredible things. What kind of things, I mean, you had all this exposure with your dad, um, but what else about dermatology drew you to the field? You said kind of the lifestyle you liked and then the surgery. Um, yeah, um, I, um, you know, what, and it's all very, what's nice about dermatology is it's, you can do, there's so many things within yes. dermatology that you can specialize in that are so very different. I think similar to your specialty yeah. too, that, uh, you know, you could do pediatric dermatology where mm-hmm. you just see kids or you could do immunodermatology where yes. you're working in a lab or you could do dermatopathology where mm-hmm. you're just reading slides skin skin slides or um i'm more surgically inclined that's what i like to do so probably the things that i was thinking about are maybe plastic surgery or mm-hmm. some kind of uh, surgery but you know that lifestyle and you know it's it's sort of, I can't say, I'm just kind of generalizing here, but maybe a little more sexist or a little difficult to Mm -hmm. really go into a specialty like that. I don't want to get in trouble because it's not always like that. Well, and especially years ago, I think every year it gets better. Yes. Right. And I think um, you can do a lot of the things that plastic surgeons can do, but you don't really have that as difficult of a residency yeah. training yeah. and also your um you know you don't do the same all the same things right. but you can really use your hands and do some very intricate surgeries yeah. and not have to go through that kind of tough lifestyle and nor either as like with you we don't really deal with a lot of emergencies as yeah. dermatologists there's very few dermatologic emergencies so it's a nice lifestyle especially as a woman i think yeah. um in the past, it was, of course, like all specialties, mostly men. But now I think that probably the majority may be female. Mm. Uh, it's very nice to be a dermatologist and be female and have a family. And, yeah. you know, your, your work is not your life, you know. So you enjoy your work, but you have other things that you need, you know, that are part of your life, too, that are equally important. And, um, and, and you know, I think like things like with you, too, similarly – uh, you deal with healthy people in general yep. and it's very, you know, you can, 
solve things easily. Yes. I mean, there's a lot of other specialties where you're dealing with so many complicated issues and you're not really going to get to an answer or really right. be able to feel like, okay, I did that. I fixed it and right. it's done. All Let's those chronic on. conditions. Yeah, so it's that kind of thing. And also we have such a variety. I mean, we see mm -hmm. really young, we see really old, yep. we see male, female, different races. So, uh, and people are in general are very happy to see you because they're in general pretty healthy. Yeah. They're not dreading seeing you because, you know, <laughs> those kinds of things. So you develop relationships with them. You develop long-standing relationships with them. You get to know parents and then you get to know the kids because you see the kids for acne. And then when they grow up, <sighs> they might ask you for, you know, anti-aging advice, you know, yeah. so those sorts of things. So you develop long-standing relationships with people, which is really nice. Yeah, that's so great. So like you said, dermatology is definitely a very competitive, one of the most competitive fields mm -hmm. for all of those reasons that you stated. It's a wonderful mm -hmm. career. And so what advice would you give to people interested in derm or what kinds of things help, do you think helped you match? Because I mean, it's, it's definitely one of the hardest to match into and people need to think about it or they want to know what they can do. Um, you know, I... I think it's difficult. It, it's um, a lot of people do. I guess it's such a small um, group of people yeah. that you the an edge is to be able to know somebody personally because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you know when you're coming to interview in a group and there's so many really really qualified candidates, yep. how are they going to differentiate you versus another if they don't know you at all? If they yeah. happen to know you and because they know that if you're going to, even though this person may be really qualified on paper, are they yeah, going they to get along with you because you're going to spend so much time with them in sure. close quarters, the personalities have to match. So I think that going and rotating with people mm -hmm. and hopefully you guys click and hopefully they like you and they yep. don't dislike you, Number, you know, that's the most important. And also... Um, you know, doing research and things like that to, to bolster. I mean, and everybody kind of knows that. I, yeah. I really think that one of the keys is really choosing strategically, being a little bit strategic with that. I mean, you don't go to the hard, go, don't go to the top program and expect that every, not everybody else is going to try to fight for that same spot. And, yeah. you know, it's going to be a lot harder to get a spot, even though you may have a great personality because there's probably a lot, bunch of other people the same way. So, you know, I think part, being strategic is probably um, in the end that way is and and l willing to s willing to live somewhere that you know you wouldn't c consider moving to. I mean, I think a lot of specialties you can choose wherever you want to go. So yeah. they'll say, "I only want to live in Las Vegas," or "I only want to live in Minnesota," and you can choose that. Well, I didn't have a choice, you know. Yeah. I was living in Springfield, Illinois. I didn't know anybody there. I didn't have any family or any friends close by. But luckily, I had a wonderful program. Mm -hmm. you know, and some people aren't so lucky. So you just have to, when people get a position in dermatology, you are very happy to have that position. You're probably not going to give it up. <laughs> Even if you feel that you're not happy where you are, you're going to suck it up and do it. Right. And um, you just have to... Am I answering that? You know what I you mean? You are. It's, it's, you are. You want to think about it and, and I guess think seriously, is this something that I'm willing to try hard to get and, you know, have in your mind that it might be something you may not be able to get, you know? You just mm -hmm. got to have all, you know, backups and things like that. Yeah. So there's no, luck involved too. I think that that is great advice because everybody says, you know, get good grades, get good board mm -hmm. scores, do research. I think the away rotation is excellent advice because it is, it's just like ophthalmology. It's such a small community and who you know matters. It really does. And then realizing and that realism that you just stated that it's super competitive. And if it's what you want to do, you're not, you might not match at your top spot right. and you need to be happy wherever you get a spot and understand that that's how it is. That's so mm -hmm. true. That's great advice. It's part of willing to sacrifice that yeah. is for, for this finite amount of time. Remember, I mean, when we're young, we right. think this is it. This is all yeah. I am. I'm stuck here, you know, but you got to remember this is not. Think of the big picture. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's so great. And then can you just kind of take us through like a day in the life? Like what is your job like? What do you get to do? I know we get to see a lot of it on social media, but what what's kind yeah. of your day or your week like? Um hectic <laughs> well I mean 
you know, you'll be there. Don't you worry. Oh, you know, yeah. when you have kids and you just you have a lot of as a woman, you, it's not just dermat. It's not dermatology. It's not all my life. It's like being a mom, being a husband. You know, um, trying to juggle all of these things mm -hmm. and. There's always guilt, you know. Oh, you're not there at your child's some, you know, play or at their presentation because you have to be at work, or you feel guilty you're canceling work because you have to. You want to be there for your kid, so yeah. you know it, it's just I, I I seriously live day by day, week by week. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just um, you know, you want you want you just you you you're a rate limiting step. That's one mm -hmm. thing in medicine mm -hmm. that is different than other people that your friends are than in business or something. I mean, right. they can, you have to be there to be able to generate income. I mean, yeah. you need to be part of it. So, yeah. um, you know, we work this long to train, to, you know, get in the position we are, but then you are limited by what you, you know, that you have to be there, but yeah, you know, you gotta you still have your a very nice living and also all that sort of thing. But it, it, it is, um, you know, so anyways, my day, I wake up, I tell, I take my kids to school, um, then I go to work and, you know, I, I, my job at, my position at, at, at work is a little more, it's, it's very broad. Uh, I do a lot of different things, mm -hmm. uh, which I like, but it's also can be hectic. I mean, I think I, I have, back in medical school, I did not know that I was a type A personality, but I think now I realize that I'm like a triple A personality. <laughs> I, I have to do two other things while I'm watching TV at night. You know, yeah. I just, I am like that kind of person that I like to multitask. Mm -hmm. I feel like maybe I'm good at it, but you know, who knows? Like probably not so good at, at, as, as opposed to doing a single thing. But, um, you know, I, I think I do a lot of general dermatology. I do a lot of skin exams. Um, I like skin, I like surgery. So I do a lot of skin cancer surgery, you know, um, Mohs micrographic surgery was just when we remove skin cancers, yeah. as you know, and we take as little of you as possible. But then we, that, part of that is being creative and creating like flaps and grafts yes. to flows and areas so that you can't see that. Hopefully you can't see that anything was done there. Right. Um, and I also do cosmetics, like what we call soft cosmetics, Botox and filler, mm -hmm. and um, uh, we do laser treatments mm -hmm. for various things, uh, anti-aging, blood vessels, that sort of thing. Um, and I also do some cosmetic surgery, mainly liposuction. This is liposuction under local anesthesia called mm -hmm. true tumescent liposuction. And, uh, so yeah, I got a bunch of different things. I mean, my husband is more the general dermatologist. He is the, okay. he is the, uh, general dermatologist and also the one who work, handles the business. Mm -hmm. I like to joke that he's the brains and I'm the personality here because <laughs> you know, I just come in and work cause I can't even, you know, my, my patients will ask me insurance questions and I'll say, talk to the office manager. Right? <laughs> I don't, I just, I just work here. Yeah. It's hard to, you know, it is, um, one thing, and we all know this, they, they don't really teach us no. to become business people. Mm -hmm. And um, something you kind of learn along the way. Um, there are things that I feel I've learned from my father um, uh, that make me hopefully a good dermatologist, but a good physician in general mm -hmm. that I'll, I'll relay to you. I think that are, is really good, important advice. And um, just it, you, you, the nice thing about dermatology, you can make it what you want. If you just want to see acne and warts all day, you can do that. You know, you, you can do that. Yeah. Uh, if you don't, I mean, I know dermatologists who have been in practice and they absolutely say, I don't want to see any rashes. I will not see any, you know, rashes. I only want to see people with skin cancer. Wow. So you can kind of, because there's not, it depends on where you live, I suppose, sure. in, in, in the country or where you practice, but you know, you can kind of make it what you want to and hopefully then enjoy it and enjoy what you do. So, so. All right. Well, do you think there's anything else that you want to kind of impart onto the budding dermatologists of the world? The budding dermatologists. <laughs> uh, well, if they watch, I think one of the things, so I have a YouTube channel called Dr. Sandra Lee, also known as Dr. Pimple Popper, because mm -hmm. that's where the whole name kind of the catchy name that yep. started on my Instagram and um, you know we have now have a website actually drpimplepopper.com too so yes, we've moved some great. of our videos over there and I'll but link think, all of that in the comments so that people yeah, can oh yeah, get no it problem. 
But I, I, I think um, one thing what I want to say about that is I get a lot of comments that, oh my gosh, this is like my dream job. This is what I would love to do. Now I want to become a dermatologist. But, you know, that's really not truly dermatology. I mean, it is, right. but it is not what we do most. I mean, I would say now it's become more like maybe 10 to 20% some days of my of my day, but before it was like 2%, if yeah. it were, you know, if it was lucky, if it was, because you don't, we don't really do comedone extractions, right. um, be, that it's not covered by insurance, so we usually don't do that for any reason, but now I've kind of found that um, people like it, and so this lets, allows me to showcase dermatology, and I think I try to put in a little bit about the other things that I do, you so, do. you know, at least I can show them a little bit about what dermatology is about and what I like about it, but it is not necessarily what all dermatologists are going to do. You know, mm -hmm. they might be doing something a little different, much different even from, from what I do. Right. Just like, you know, like you're saying. Yeah. Okay. So that's probably pretty much it. No, that's great advice because yeah, I think people could look at your social media and think that like this is what dermatology is. When yeah, I just go in and I, pop, I squeeze blackheads. <laughs> it feels great, or I squeeze a cyst or something. And I've ne I've done more cysts in the last year than my entire career. Wow. Easily. So um, you know, we, normally I would avoid cysts because mm -hmm. you know they're messy and they're not you know. But now I don't know. I, I now I'm I've become a cyst expert. You I are didn't an know. Like now I know the little intricacies. I can kind of predict what a cyst is going to do before. I just okay. Well, I, I don't have to remove that. You can if you want to, but right. you know, because they're not. You know, they're not life. They're not life threatening, right. and they're not important that you need to remove them. Right. But it's just something that's very interesting, and I think for you too, because you're kind of in this whole um, social media thing that you know you'll be able to do things like this and show people. Uh, what you can do as a as an ophthalmologist. Mm -hmm. One thing I will say too about this is that what's nice about social media is that you can show your personality, and when you show that and you show how you interact with patients, it it, it actually endears you to others. I mean, they mm -hmm. kind of feel like they know you and they feel safe. Then you know, because yep. they you know, if you're going to choose a doctor, you don't know who one person is compared to another. You, it's like meeting a stranger, right? And they're going to examine your eyes or examine your skin. So I think um, it actually is very good publicity for a any dermatologist to kind of show what your personality is um, in videos like that. Yeah, you're definitely right. I think people want to know who you are as mm -hmm. a person. And so them kind of getting that snapshot into uh, the personal side of you out, yeah. outside of work, I don't think that that devalues you professionally mm -hmm. at all. I think that just makes you a more rounded person and, and lets you connect with your patients right. even more. That's how I feel about it. And I went to this big social media um, summit at Mayo and they were saying, you know, we as physicians have to meet our patients where they are. And where they are is on YouTube and on Instagram. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that's true. And so yeah. if we're putting our interaction there, then th that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, it just, it, it, it's definitely extremely powerful. Mm -hmm. it, it is. And, um, you know, I think it shows, I think for you too, you're young, you have a great personality. I'm sure you relate well with your patients. And that will only only increase your respect really amongst patients. They will, you know, one thing that's interesting that my father told me was that um, he said, you can be an excellent dermatologist uh, in terms of go to the top school, be the top of your class, be so, you know, book smart, mm -hmm. but have most terrible bedside manner and people, patients will think you're a terrible doctor. Right. On the other side, you can be not so high in your class, not not the smartest dermatologist, but you can have a wonderful bedside manner and they will trust you and they will love you. And hopefully you can have a little bit of both, you know, right. but I think that, you know, bedside manner is actually a lot more important than I think they, re they really teach you in medical school. It, it is very important. Um, it's just uh, something that you 
learn um, and something that can also, I think, just part of your personality. So I just try to show my personality that I'm not higher than or more important than them. I speak to them like I would my my, my family members or my yeah. girlfriends or my friends. Yeah. And um, that's it. One of the things is that it transcends is not just um, my what I'm doing as a dermatologist treating patients, but it becomes more like, you know, have you ever seen, uh, do, you watch, do you follow on Instagram, Facebook, Humans of New York? For example, do you oh, know that? Yeah, it becomes like more like you're doing little snapshots of people's mm-hmm. lives, you know, where you you have this interaction with them and you hear what you hear what we talk about and you yeah. learn a little bit about this person, but you don't know who they are. Right, you know, you just so it's kind of like a human nature kind yep. of piece, you know. So that is what makes it interesting, like it a little is. your so- little conversations. They're so great. Yeah, that's yeah. the part of it that. Um, it's just really nice. So yeah, and I think that you know, like you can reach people in a healthcare perspective too, because people watch your videos because they think it's fun. But then mm-hmm. they might think, oh, I should probably go get that mole checked because yes. they, you know, yes. like you're reaching yeah. people when you don't even realize yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Or or you're making it um, not scary to them. Yes, not acceptable. Yes. It's not. It's not so scary to see an ophthalmologist or a dermatologist or a surgeon because look, this is what they're doing. And, right. You know. right. Yep, I love that. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. You're so welcome. Thank this you for great. thinking about me. Oh, so I appreciate oh, that. Yes, you are my favorite dermatologist ever. <laughs> okay. Have it was a nice great to meet night. you. Good luck with everything, though. I'm thank sure you. you don't need it. I'm sure you're going to do great. You're so sweet. Thank you okay. so, so much. Get some oh, rest. You're welcome. Bye. Okay. Take care. Bye.